I make over $2,000 per month selling printables online, working less than 10 hours per month. I know that might sound unbelievable, but today I'm gonna tell you how. Honestly, during the first few months, it was kind of slow. I didn't have much sales. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really understand like what buyers were searching for, how to create in-demand products. I had spent a bunch of time creating all these different printables and digital products. And during that week, my phone just started blowing up. After that week was over, I had just made over $700 from just two or three products that did really, really well. I wasn't working that week. I was skiing all week long. I had never made that much money without trading my time for it ever. It was crazy. And from then I was hooked. So a printable is basically a, you can also call it a digital download, but it's a product that's purchased online and it can either be printed or just used on your computer. So some examples include calendars, planners, invitations, games, templates, there's thousands of them, but those are some of the most common ones. So the average price point for a printable definitely varies because you could have like a simple one pager that may sell for two or three dollars. You could also have like some mega financial planner bundle that you sell for $50. It totally depends on the product, but I'd say anywhere from two to 50 is probably an accurate range. I started selling printables online when my friend Julie, she was a fellow financial independence podcaster. She was like, hey, I found this new side hustle. I was like the side hustle guy at the time. I had like 20 different side hustles going on. She's like, I found this side hustle. I spent like 60 hours setting up this Etsy shop selling printables. I had never been on Etsy before, never heard of a printable, but she explained it to me. I was intrigued. She told me what they were and she's like, yeah, I made about $6,000. And I was like, hold on. That's like over $100 an hour. And, you know, at the time I was making like 20 bucks an hour, $25 an hour doing freelance stuff. And I was like, I think I'm going to give this a try. And the other thing was like Julie had stopped working on her shop. She was back focused on her corporate job, but she was still making sales from those digital products, which is one of the cool things about digital products is you create it once. You could sell it one time. You could sell it 10,000 times. There's not much additional labor needed on your end. So I set up my Etsy shop and Honestly, during the first few months, it was kind of slow. I didn't have much sales. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really understand like what buyers were searching for, how to create in-demand products. But actually my first big break, I was hanging out with a bunch of FinConners. FinCon's a conference that I love to go to. We were on this trip called SkiCon and my phone was blowing up in my pocket. This was Valentine's week. I had spent a bunch of time in January creating all these different printables and digital products for Valentine's Day. And during that week, it was like February 7th or 8th my phone just started blowing up. The Etsy cha-ching sound for those who are Etsy sellers, it was just nonstop. So I was like, okay, what's going on? So we go into the lodge, I go in, it's lunchtime, and I have over $100 in sales. And before this, I'd made like a maybe a cumulative $75 in my shop. And after that week was over, I had just made over $700 in my Etsy shop from just two or three products that did really, really well during Valentine's Day. And from then I was hooked. And that's what I always encourage other new sellers to do as well. Is like, you're not going to crush it in your first product or even your first 10. You're gonna, just going to keep putting stuff out there and seeing what sticks. And once you finally get something that works, like I did, then you kind of keep doubling down on that. So my startup costs were minimal. Etsy is awesome in that it's a free platform to sell on. Like Shopify, for example, you have to pay $30 a month, I think is the base plan. But Etsy, you can set up a free account and it just costs 20 cents to add a listing. So you know, if I were to put a listing up there, I pay the 20 cents fee only once it gets sold, which is the great part too. Once it gets sold and it kind of renewed the listing, then you pay the 20 cents, but that's really all the startup costs. You can use free design software. I was using Canva, the free version, because I couldn't even afford the pro version of Canva, which is a graphic design program at that point. So it was a free version of Canva, didn't have any other tools. I was using free keyword research tools like E-Rank and Uber Suggest and Google Trends, Pinterest Trends. But seriously, 20 cents was all I was in for the side hustle. And so basically the investment was my time and energy. It wasn't much on the money side up front. One of the unexpected downsides of selling on Etsy is that a lot of people think it's a get rich quick scheme. They'll put up a few printable products, a few digital products in their Etsy shop, and they'll, they'll be like, why aren't I making thousands of dollars already? It's just because it's a volume game, like I mentioned before. You're not gonna be a huge success in the first week. Your first five products aren't gonna bring in thousands of dollars. It takes practice just like anything else. And so I think that's the biggest thing. And that's one of the biggest downsides is a lot of people see the side hustle online. They'll hear someone like me talking about it. They'll read an article, they'll watch a YouTube video and they'll be like, I'm gonna try this. They give it a week and they don't make a thousand dollars. Then they give up. And 
that's just an unrealistic expectation. It took me actually only a few weeks to make my first sale on Etsy, which was surprising to me. I think I got fairly lucky if because I had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't doing keyword research. My products weren't that attractive. I just got like one lucky sale and that didn't snowball into tons more sales right after that. It was like one sale, four weeks later, another sale, two weeks later, another sale. It was super slow at the beginning, but I actually got a little bit of traction right off the bat, which some people it happens to, some people it doesn't. It's just a numbers game. For someone's first year selling printables or digital products on Etsy, it really depends how much time you have. So when I talk to people and they want to start this, I do preface this with it's a side hustle. Most people don't replace their day job and quit their job because they're selling so many printables on Etsy, but it isn't unreasonable. And I've seen a lot of people who are making hundreds or thousands of dollars per month after a full year of selling. Like I said, it does take a while. It's kind of a, it's kind of like a ramp. Like you're not making much over the first few months, but as you start to get more successful digital products, and as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the reason digital products are so powerful is once you have one, it's almost like a mini passive income machine. If you have one successful digital product and you're, you know, it's $5 and you're selling 10 of those every month consistently, all of a sudden you have an extra $50 in passive income that's coming in month over month over month. And if you can multiply that by 10, you have 10 products doing that. Now you have a $500 per month business. Now, what I will say, and something that I've focused on in my shop specifically, is I focus a lot on seasonal products. So I have huge booms during Valentine's week, during all of February, during Christmas time, during Halloween, during some of the summer events. And so like my shop is very in line with the seasons. I could have a month in February where I make $3,000 and I could have a slow month in April where it's like, barely a thousand. So it totally depends for me on seasonality, but you could also tailor your shop to more evergreen, non-seasonal items where you're making that recurring revenue month over month over month. An example of an evergreen non-seasonal item would be a template. I sell a bunch of these. So for example, I know there's a lot of business folks watching in this audience. You could sell like a social media template. You could sell a media kit. The steps you can take to boost your chances of success is to really focus in on the keyword research. I know that might sound really daunting. And I know for me, I was like, keyword research, like that sounds really advanced and SEO, search engine optimization. But honestly, going where the crowd is looking is the best way to make sales. Like if people are searching for something, if there's a thousand people typing something into the Etsy search bar and you can figure out what they're typing into the Etsy search bar and you create that thing, you don't even have to like drum up demand. You don't have to be marketing your thing because the buyers are already there. Number two, and this is something that even if you do the keyword research part right, if you do this wrong, you probably won't make sales. And that is your main listing image. Very similar to like a YouTube thumbnail. If you don't have a very clickable main listing image, people aren't going to be going into your product, reading the description, seeing what it's all about. And so you won't make sales. You could have the perfect keywords, the perfect SEO on your thing. But if it's just the ugliest listing picture ever and everyone else on that search results page has way better listings than you, then you're not going to make that sale. So I would say keyword research first and foremost. Then second, making sure that that listing image is as good as it can be. And I actually created a free workshop, it's a 60 minute workshop that goes over all this stuff, like the basics of keyword research, SEO, listing pictures, and all the other things that go into selling. You can get that for free at goldcityventures.com slash workshop. The most stressful thing that happened was honestly those first couple of months. It's really hard if you're not making many sales at all and you're spending dozens of hours per week like I was, like I was, designing, I was like researching, trying to figure out products and it wasn't really going anywhere. And a lot of people, including my past self, probably would have gave up, but I just kind of kept sticking with it. And I was like, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to find a product or multiple products that are going to be popular and they're going to sell. But yeah, honestly, it was those first couple of months just getting over the mental hurdle of failing over and over and over again and only having less than 5% of my products be successful. My biggest mistake was probably just creating printables and digital products willy nilly at the beginning. And so I didn't do any research. I would just like think of a product in my head. And I'm like, that sounds like a good idea, but it wasn't actually a good idea. I'll give you an example. It's a horrible example. I made like a birthday party drinking game. And I think I actually made one that was like a generic one, just a birthday party drinking game. And one was for, uh, for 21 year olds a birthday party drinking game. And then I was like, hold on, what 21 year old is going on Etsy to figure out how to drink. They're just going to go and drink with their friends. They're not they're not buying anything on Etsy to make this more exciting like the product just flopped completely. So, I thought it was fun and I think I was like 20 
I was 21 or 22 at the time. I was like, this is going to be so awesome. I was so excited. I like created this whole game. I'm like, this is going to be a smash hit. And nobody bought it. <laughs> it was just because I thought it was a cool product. I didn't do any research. I didn't realize that there was absolutely zero demand for this type of thing. And I went ahead and spent probably like 10 hours creating this and listing it and all that stuff. So definitely a failure, but a learning lesson in retrospect. I'm someone who likes to have fun with this. I haven't really mentioned that part of this side hustle is that I, I've done every side hustle under the sun. I've done freelance writing, podcast editing, video editing. I've sold physical products. I've done affiliate market management. I've done email marketing. This is definitely one of the funnest ones. Like you're literally creating these fun designs and then you're selling them to people. It's you get to like basically use your creativity as much as you possibly can. Whereas something like freelance writing, yeah, it did pay pretty well when I was doing that. But to me, it was kind of boring. Sorry, freelance writers. It's such a fun side hustle. It doesn't have to be a side hustle that's going to replace your day job income or something that's going to make you $10,000 a month. But if you're looking for a couple hundred dollars a month, a thousand dollars a month, and have fun while you're doing it, I think that's why printables are a great option for most people. Every month now, I probably only work a couple of hours. I'm talking four to five hours per month. Now, I don't want to confuse people and say that it just takes four to five hours per month to be successful because I front loaded a lot of the work with anything passive income, whether it's digital products or real estate or small business or something else. A lot of the time, energy, money, whatever resource you need to get that thing up and running happens at the start. So I created you know, hundreds of printables and this all happened at the very beginning. I did all my research, created the printables, but now many of these printables that I've created four plus years ago are still bringing me revenue today. Like I'm making daily sales and stuff that I created years ago. So a lot of the work is front loaded. So at this point, basically what I do in my Etsy shop, I'm still doing some creation and I actually have hired a designer at this point who's helping me create products for my shop. But most of the stuff is answering customer messages and then sometimes messing with Etsy ads during the holiday seasons. One question I get all the time is, is the printables market saturated? The answer is no, but I want to give you the reasons why. Because even when I tell people no, they're like, that's BS. You know, this is definitely saturated. I've seen a lot of people do this. So here's the thing. Etsy has been spending a ton of money on marketing. If you have a TV, if you walk by places with TVs, you might've seen an Etsy ad over the past couple of years. They've also spent a lot of that ad budget on Google ads, Facebook ads. They have just been really trying to expand their buyer base. So Etsy is actively going out and recruiting new customers for people like you who could be selling on Etsy. Even though there's a whole debacle about Etsy like raised its fees from 5% to 6.5% because of this whole ad thing where they're increasing their spend. But here's the good thing for digital product sellers. I totally feel for physical product sellers, the basket weavers, the hat makers, the candle makers, all the other physical things I just mentioned. Because if Etsy does increase their fees, it does kind of stink. You whittled that basket and you now have to go ship it out and Etsy is just eating into a larger percentage of that profit. And it's not really much of a gain for you because you would have probably sold it anyway. But for a digital product seller, well, let's say you're making 10 sales a month on some digital products and your profit margins are $5 every single time you make a sale. And now Etsy, you know, they take a little bit more. They take 6.5% instead of 5%. But now you're selling 15 of those per month. You're actually going to be making more money and Etsy's going to be making more money and it doesn't require any additional time or energy from you because it's a digital product and you could sell an unlimited number of them. So I love when people ask me this question, especially in regards to digital products, like, isn't it too saturated? It's like, well, Etsy is actually just constantly expanding the market by pouring so much into advertising, getting new people on the platform. They've gone from like 80 million to 100 million buyers in just a couple of years and they're continuing to spend and expand. So I think this is just the beginning. Another thing worth noting is that digital products right now are only eight, represent a 15% market share, while physical products are still 85. So we're still kind of small potatoes in the grand scheme of things on Etsy. So I think there's a lot of room for improvement. You can find out more about me and I have a business partner, Julie, and all of this under the umbrella of Gold City Ventures. Basically, we both started this side hustle and so many of our friends and family and people online were asking us like, wait, what are you doing? Like how you're selling printables on Etsy? What's that? And so we started helping people. Julie started a little mastermind that then evolved into a whole community. And now we have all these free resources helping people to get started. We have a YouTube channel. We have that free workshop I mentioned before. And it's been pretty amazing. And now Julie and I personally have expanded into selling on Shopify and selling some stuff on our own website as well. So it's been a crazy journey from you know that random little idea to making that first $700 in a week on that ski trip to now having a whole digital products and printables empire where we're, you know, helping thousands of people do this.